Hey, welcome back. You're still watching our morning show here on TV Our World, coming to you live from Jakarta, Indonesia, starting point. And we have exciting dialogue coming up. In the meantime, a few reports before we converse with our guest today. Yeah, still in the spirit of celebrating World Scouts Day, yeah. Rahmat. Uh, let's give a little bit of background of like what a Scouts Day is in the first place or what Scout is. So the Scout movement in Indonesia is locally known as Pramuka, derived from the ancient Javanese language, which roughly means youth bringing positive changes to the community. Well, let's take a look at the brief history of Indonesian Scouts. Indonesia's first president, Sukarno and Yogyakarta, Sultan Hamengkubuwono IX, came up with the idea of merging boys' scouts and girls' scouts into a single nationwide scouts organization. The idea was first formulated during their visit to a girls' scout camp back in October 1959. Following intense discussions, the National Umbrella Organization, or Pramuka, was introduced on August 14, 1961. Pramuka is a shorthand of Praja Muda Karana, meaning skilled youth who brings positive changes to the community. Sultan Hamengkubuwono IX became the first national leader of the newly established Pramuka. The Indonesian scout anthem incorporates the seeds of the coconut palm a widely spread tropical plant, all parts of which are being used by Indonesians in their daily lives. The emblem symbolizes the philosophy of a true scout who strives to make oneself useful in all aspects of life. To this day, the scout movement is characterized by outdoor, close to nature activities, as scouts are being groomed to have courage, resiliency, and brimming with positive and can do attitudes. Let's go over to Central Java now. Private elementary school Pangudi Luhur in Solo celebrated National Scouts Day by making a scout themed kids movie in the comedy genre involving students, teachers, and staff in the cast. While Indonesia usually celebrates National School Day on August 14th with a flag raising ceremony and camping out, the Pangudiluhur Elementary School in Surakarta, Central Java welcomes the day by making a movie. The 15-minute comedy features students, teachers, and staff go to school as they head out for the weekend camping activity called Persami. The short film, which was produced in three weeks, gives the young students an opportunity to learn on movie production and acting. The short movie has been uploaded to the YouTube channel of Pangudiluhur 1 and two elementary schools with the hope that it can entertain other kids and wider audience. Okay, now we have had a brief history as well as background on World Scouts Day and also the presence of Scouts in Indonesia, Rahman. I think it's quite interesting. And now we have two special guests in the studio. Uh, two Scout members, Satria Asa Naufal and Kenisha Ayudia Wija Narko on TBR World. Thank you so much for coming in the studio. Thank you, guys. Definitely Satria fun. and Kanisha, our little brothers and sisters. Yes, that's true. <laughs> We're so proud of them. So it's such an exciting day. Mm -hmm. And not only us in Indonesia, but around the world. This month, in particular, we celebrate many things. Among others is the World Scouts Day. Uh, first of all, personal question to each and every one of you. Satria and Kanisha, out of all of these uh, offers at schools, activities, and possibilities to join, uh, them at schools, you guys chose to do scouts. Why are you uh, interested in the first place to do scouts? Let's uh, start with Satria first. Okay, so the reason why I kind of chose scouts as my extracurricular is because, you know, how stale it gets when you're just in the classroom, you know, when you open your book, 
then you learn a lot of math and then a lot of biology and all that stuff. It gets really, really stale. It gets boring. You're trapped in this box room with the teacher just explaining all the stuff and then you're just sitting there all <laughs> bored, yeah. right? I know the feeling, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know it, it just gets really boring. So sometimes I just feel like, you know what? I want to go back to my roots, you know? Because in my knowledge, back then, we didn't have like big rooms and we were just in nature in general. So I decided to do Scouts because it has a lot of ties to nature. Mm and especially the adventurous aspect of it, it's really refreshing to my mind, actually. So the bottom line is you feel more alive yeah, doing you Scouts. Alive, yeah. You have your passion there. What about you, Kanisha? So similarly, um, I feel like when you're just scrolling through your phone all day, it gets really boring. And <laughs> um, I feel like I need to do something more adventurous, something mm. more active. So I was interested in Scouts. and. Um, doing scouts offers a change of activity from scrolling through your phone mm. to a more adventurous and more outdoorsy kind of activity. Plus, when I join scouts, I can take a lot of stuff that can be useful now and in the future. I can also interact with my friends. I can be closer with them. I can improve a lot of skills. I can improve my communication skills, mm. my public speaking skills, and also teamwork in general. So uh, I feel like it's nice to go out once in a while mm -hmm. to actually enjoy the nature that's around us instead of just staying in your room all day and scrolling through mindless social media. It's more oh. enjoyable and definitely healthier for these younger generations, Most definitely, Audrey. Yeah. You get yeah. moving too in Scouts. That's right. So uh, how long have you two uh, been in Scouts? Uh, start with me? Okay, mm. so I Let's start the, what grade are you oh, in? Oh, right? yeah, that's right. <laughs> and we have to clarify that first, yes. Well, I'm in the 11th grade. I'm a second year in high school. Okay, mm. and Kanisha, you are? I'm a 9th grade student, so it's my third year in middle school. Right, so how long have you guys been doing Scouts? I've been doing Scouts for at least, if I count, it would be three years, three including years. this year. Um, even though it's like a really long time, I know like I have to learn a lot of stuff. There's mm. not a lot of things that I'm really knowledgeable about it because I'm all obviously still learning. Of course, I know a few things about teamwork and how to build a tent, mm. but you know, there's more to meet the eye. Right, right? not mm. only teamwork, building tents, but you know what they say, as long as you live, you learn. That's but true. again, three years is quite, That's you know, an extended yeah. experience. Wow. We'll delve deeper into that later on. Kanisha, what about you? So the first time I've been introduced to Scouts was in first grade. So mm -hmm. I've been um, in Scouts ever since I was in elementary school. But recently, I've been more active in middle school because in my middle school, for my personal experience, they offer more activities than it is in elementary school. So I definitely learned more in middle school. And I was more active here in middle school. Mm. Mm. So how did you guys get involved in Scouts? Was it uh, per the instructions of your teachers or your uh, seniors at school? Yeah. How did you find out and how did you come to be so interested in Scouts? Is it out of your own will? Like it that's was, right. At first, it was like an obligatory thing for like, um, mm. for like the school and all yeah, that You stuff. have to do it, school you have, says. You have to do it. It's <laughs> Forced part, to do it. It's part, <laughs> it's part of the curriculum. You got to yeah. do it. Mm -hmm. uh, whatever you say, oh, there's an assignment, you do it. It's like, it's like yeah. any type of, uh, what's it called? Um, subject, you know, mm. but you know, the more I delve into it, the more I kind of fell in love with it, Espe mm. especially the survival aspect of it. You feel like your life depends on it, you know, especially mm. there's this thing called uh, Lintas Alam. Yeah. Yeah. You go there as well. Yeah. And yeah, I'm pretty sure uh, it was obligatory at once, but now I feel, uh, what's it called? I feel that you find your passion it. there. I find your passion mm. there, yeah. Right. So, yeah. so it, started as, it started as mandatory from school, but then it becomes something that you truly are invested in. But you mentioned something that, in, that intrigued me, uh, Satrio, was that the survival 
aspect of it. What did you have to survive during the Scots? Can you share yeah. with us some of the experience? <laughs> really intense, that, yeah, like, wow. that you remember until now. Mm -hmm. I mean, surviving school alone, <laughs> it, it takes skill. <laughs> but surviving, surviving yes, something in, that you learn in Scouts, in, in that you in just, the wild, yeah, <laughs> in the wilderness <laughs> or something. I mean, yeah. Uh, for example, like Lintas Alam, which mm -hmm. means exploring the wilderness of the nature of it. Right. Yeah, that aspect. So there's this thing that happened to me. So there was this case that there, there was a snake in the road. A snake oh, wow. in the road. And that was during your one of those adventures yeah, in yeah, Scouts. Yeah, and it was really life or death to me. I used my stick to like show it off. But also... It wasn't afraid of you, the snake. I it hope. was defying you in a <laughs> yeah. way like... You had to look it straight in the yeah. eye. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. a standoff between yeah. Satria and, and the snake. The and so my, what, and what my you do? And my squad, actually. So and your yeah, squad. I, used my stick and tried to shoo it off. It did shoo off, but you know, mm. it was a bit scary at first. Mm. <laughs> but afterwards, the, another survival aspect of it is you make this kind of stretcher thing. So mm -hmm. mm. in the Lintas Alam thing, which is when you're walking around uh, through nature and all that, my friend got really tired. And my guy was like really heavy. And there was no way any, any, one, of, any one of us could carry him, you know? Mm -hmm. mm. So. In that way, we had to make something, you know. So the thing is, I bought rope and he bought, uh, what's it called, the, those long sticks. We made like a stretcher. And right, that so stretch makeshift, makeshift stretcher. Makeshift stretcher, yeah. It's not something that you rolled from home, yeah. but you created in the wilderness, in yeah, the wild. Created, yeah. Wow. Yeah, and with that, we carry all the way back to base, uh, to our camp and, you know. I mean, imagine if we didn't know how to make the stretcher in the first place. Right. Yeah. Imagine if you just stayed in your room scrolling through your phones <laughs> yeah. or in Mine our case, media. through our tablets. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Imagine just dragging like a guy. That is know. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. You can actually save someone with a makeshift stretcher. Yeah, that's, correct, correct. I mean, that's it. I mean, you don't do scouts for you. You do scouts for your colleagues mm. and for your community, mm -hmm. something that you can help people out yourself. with. Yeah. Right. Kanisha, share with us some of the most memorable moments that you've been through in Scouts. Uh, so one of my most memorable experiences in Scout was in 8th grade. Mm. So my school has this program called Super Camp. Basic super Camp? Yes. It's like superheroes but for camp. For camp. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so basically it's, the, it's this two-day camp um, event yeah. where we go there using like this milita military car. Oh, okay. Mm. I have seen those. These sit in the back. Yes. This, like, yeah. In a huge truck. Yeah. I was yeah, once on mm -hmm. that truck too. Yes. But, yeah. And in my school, the scout is we are divided into groups. Okay. We choose the groups and then we choose the leaders and yeah. we choose the vice leader. And, and where was this? Um, this was in the place as in, as in the place or? Yeah, the, the city. Is it, was it in Jakarta or? It's in another city. Oh, okay. Yeah. Continue. Um, after we arrived there, mm -hmm. we got into our tents with our groups, mm -hmm. and then we do loads of activities. And mm -hmm. one activity that really stuck with me because it was the most memorable, memorable one was, um, so before that, there are many like competitions that we have to do with our groups. Mm -hmm. And this one competition is a cooking competition. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So my group brought, like everyone was, everyone do, um, brought their own ingredient. Someone brought the spoon, the spatula, the mm -hmm. plates. Someone even brought the stove, the camping yeah. stove. All the kitchen utensils. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Basically all the stuff and ingredients you need to make the food. Mm -hmm. And I see everyone around me was working really hard to finish their food. And then people were helping and then... At first, my team was really struggling because mm. um, we had the gas and we had the stove. But even though we put the gas into the stove, the fire wouldn't, wouldn't start. Wouldn't start. Mm. Oh, okay. So, did you have to make your? <laughs> did you start your own fire yeah, with, like, you know, <laughs> with the stone thing? <laughs> no, don't tell me you had to do that. So. Yes, because so what happened? So, at first, we were really worried because everyone only brought one stove, and also my team only brought one stove, and mm. it wasn't working. We ask some people for help and they still can get the fire to start so we were really worried because 
all of the teams, they have started. Their stoves mm. had mm. lit up and they have started chopping up their ingredients and stuff. Mm. But um, I, don't, I'm, I wasn't really sure how it came to be, but thankfully in the end, the stove did work and we did complete What were you guys trying to cook? Uh, sayur asam. Sayur asam. Wow. <laughs> and doing the scouts. That is, awesome. that is so nice. Admirable, I'm yes. hungry a little bit. So, one with the reptile, one with the, you know, cookery. <laughs> yes. So, that's quite an experience, guys. Wow. So, those must be experiences that you, I, I think nowadays, even Rama, like the younger generation, like we don't experience a lot of that. Mm. Um, we don't experience going out to nature. And so, I, I really admire the fact that uh, Satria and Kanisha, you both make the decision to choose scouts. I'm curious, when you first wanted to join, what was the reactions of your families or friends? Because, as you said before, nowadays people are mostly on Instagram, on TikTok yeah. scrolling. However, yeah. you chose another route that is quite uh, unconventional. So, and what was their response? Commendable, too. Yes, commendable. commendable. Choice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure they really supported my, uh, what's it called, my decision here to choose scouts. Mm -hmm. Because in general, what like what's the downside of being a scout? You have more friends, you have more experience, yeah. mm -hmm. especially out in nature. Yeah, you stay more fit yeah, too. Yeah, mm -hmm. where everything in the world is just crowded by capitalism and all that stuff. You never really it's see you, capitalism. you never really see Amazing. nature. You never really see that. It's a hard, yeah, hard we're, world we're out there, Sandra. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's hard for a man to survive amidst all of this capitalism. In world, yes. <laughs> it's amazing. Wow. I mean, imagine like every day you walk through cities, just tall skyscrapers, but you never really see a forest. You never yeah. see tall trees before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, go to my hometown yeah. in Yogyakarta, we have to go through a paddy field to get to my house. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah, it's a change of scenery. Yeah, especially that. Mm -hmm. And as well, it really reflects upon my childhood back then yeah. because mm -hmm. I used to play in paddy fields and in, gen in, it, in general in, in nature. Mm -hmm. and, and finally, I can touch back to my childhood again through uh, being a scout, being in Pramuka and all that stuff. Yeah, I mean, the general reaction is they're really proud of me. Wow. Mm -hmm. I'm positive. proud of myself as well. Yeah. Wow. Have you received similar support from your family too, Kirisha? So, um, the first, like how I got into Scouts was, um, it was because it was obligatory at school at first. Yeah. And at yeah. first I was like, not really into it. At first I wasn't really excited about it because mm -hmm. I didn't really know anything about it. Yeah. But, um, so my friends, I have a few, I have some best friends at school and they are in this thing called PASUS or Pasukan Husus. Mm. They're like the special like f team in the scouts. Right. They like special to... Special force, we call it yes. uh, in the military. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They like to tell me about like what they learned in PASUS, like Sandi, Morsa and other things and mm. I didn't know what they were yeah. and they sounded really really difficult and at first I didn't really understand but they kept like telling me all these fun stuff all these fun comp competitions they've been through and like all the prizes they won and from there on my curiosity grew and mm. I became more, more, more and more invested in scouts so mm. now I'm definitely more into scouts than I was ever before, and I'm excited to learn more. Right. Guys, if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong, there are these so-called levels when you're in scouts. You right. start as, as, a, as, as a beginner and then go to a more advanced stage. Uh, do you go through the same things in scouts right now? What, what levels are you in, if you can share that with uh, us? Uh, yeah, Sophia? correct. I mean, there are a couple levels. For example, she's using a red, uh, what's it called, badge thing? Ah, okay. Mineral. That's, that's the something. sign of it. Yeah, this What's the name it. for that one? This one is Panagak. Panagak. Okay, yes. and then the red one is? Mine is Penggalang, if I'm not mistaken. Ah, okay. So the yellow belt and, and then red, <laughs> red belt. belt. Huh. Yeah, all right. So <laughs> how does that, what, what stages do you have to go through to get to all of these levels? Mm -hmm. Although I'm not really knowledgeable in that because, mm. to be honest, I just got this title by just going up to high school. Yeah. Mm. That's yeah. the thing. I didn't really know if I have to like do some kind of achievement thing like they do with badges. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Badges are a different thing. But mm -hmm. yeah, I'm pretty sure when you move up to high school, uh, your, what's it called? This thing changes as well. Oh, changes so it's a uh, school level. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. 
Ah, oh, I see. Okay. And, and you did mention, so they do have badges. Yeah. Yes. Can you explain more about that? Uh, speaking of badges, I've never really gotten my first badge ever. <laughs> That's the funny thing. Uh, you just badge yourself for your achievement. Yeah. Yeah. I just really just acknowledge <laughs> what I've done. <laughs> I just acknowledge what I've done. Okay, mm. you've went through this forest. You've yeah. gone mm. through this. That you is fought. your own personal achievement. Yeah. Yeah, you right, fought so. a reptile. You carried your man. You saved your friends. You saved yes. your yeah. friends. <laughs> Next, a bear it's and a crocodile. <laughs> Let's go. Check out the list. Let's I go think, for uh, it. <laughs> so I don't know if you've heard something called Mampala, and that is the um, organizations for college students uh, to do all of these adventures in, oh. in the wild. Do you think that that's something that you'd be interested in later on in the, you know, as as you as you go to college or university? Is this like uh, jam the Jambori thing? Uh, it's, it's something else. It is an organization for, for college students. But let's talk about the Jamboree thing because mm. uh, in relation to the international events of World Scouts Day, there have been National Jamboree, there have mm. been International Jamboree. Mm -hmm. Have you guys ever partaken in uh, any one of those things? Sadly, no. Sadly, no. <laughs> Although right. I they said really that with a smile though. Yes. <laughs> Although Wasn't I really want to it. join one. <laughs> <laughs> But you would like to? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What have you heard about these things? Um, if I'm not mistaken, it's like this big event where a lot from different, I think different nationals as well. Yes. And uh, right. what's it called? From different provinces and all that. They combine. Even different countries. When different it's countries. International. Wow. Yeah. Different countries. Yeah. And they, they combine into this one big event where they do all this fun activities yeah. and all that And they stuff. showcase their skills yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. They compete with each other in a good way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who's yeah. the best? Yeah. Right. With their yell yells and <laughs> the yell yell. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's my favorite part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so of course. That. Yeah. Wow. yeah. Uh, what about you, Kinesh? Have you taken part in any one of these jamborees? So, for me, sadly, no, too. But mm -hmm. in the future, mm -hmm. if I had the opportunity to, I would honestly would want to partake because mm -hmm. it's it sounds really fun. And plus, you can take a lot of stuff from the event that you can use in the later days. Yeah, mm. right. Kanisha and also to Satria later on, I'd like to get your take on what Kanisha said at the beginning, that for the digital uh, generation at the moment, the uh, seductions of just being all day on your bed under the blanket with phones or tablets it's in your growing. hands, just being in front of the screens is... Uh, is huge, you know, it's something that a lot of our younger generation would just prefer to, other than doing outdoorsy activities, doing more physical activities. Uh, what sort of message would you guys convey to your uh, colleagues, to your fellow younger generations, to be more interested in these sort of uh, activities? Uh, Kenny, shall I start with you? Um, I feel like they should learn, like, the importance to keep active and staying fit and not just scrolling through mindless social media because mm. you can so life moves on and if you keep if you spend your life only by scrolling through social media you can miss out on a lot of great opportunities mm. Mm. right mm. well very well said that what, yes. uh, what about you Satria? how do you encourage your peers yes. to do scouts my message towards my brothers and sisters behind the camera and behind your screens. Let's do the oh. head counts there. Yeah, <laughs> like five or six Lots of them. Lots of people are watching. No, no, so. beyond the screens. Oh, beyond for those the of screen. you guys watching beyond out there. Beyond the screens, the teenagers, the, <laughs> the kids. Yeah. What's up? Hey, do you think that sleeping and being under your blanket would make your parents proud? It, especially every day. And you scrolling through all your apps and all that stuff. The timelines. The yeah. time, you shortening your attention span. Do you think that that's what you want to be. You got to be making yourself proud, man. Mm. Especially your physical mm. fitness, you know, because especially in my um, events, I, al I always see like people try to tire out themselves uh, really quickly and they couldn't catch up. And to be honest, that's kind of saddening to me because especially in our time with all our phones and all that stuff, we're really shrouded by comfort, too much comfort even. Yeah. And this too much comfort makes us all weak, you know. And Make lazy. Lazy, yeah. yeah. Lazy is a horrible, horrible thing. Mm. And towards my message to all my friends and especially my colleagues, please get up and look at nature for once. It's right. really mm. beautiful than your rectangular, uh, what's it called? Rectangular phone. 
Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That goes red once in a while, so you need to plug in cables to recharge yeah, it. Yeah. 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 Hold on, guys. But it goes without saying that your generation is quite attached to gadgets and social medias. Do you, in any way, participate in those platforms to sort of bring over the message to do more of these good things yeah. through Scouts? I mean, promote you, Scouts. That's well, right. Through a greater and, community as well. Okay. It's mm -hmm. it's okay to use uh, in a proportionate manner to use the social medias, but do you use them to sort of uh, you know get the message across to your mm -hmm. friends look guys I'm having fun I'm staying yeah. fit with with scouts and doing all of these physical activities come join us yeah mm. um, so using my so what you're telling me is like what I do to promote this kind of uh, preach that I do yeah you know? well yeah I obviously do like for example Although I don't really post about my scouts in my social media, but I must say this, I post a lot of me uh, trying to inspire my friends to work out. That's the thing, physical yeah. fitness. Physical yeah. fitness is a part of uh, being a scout as well. That's also yeah, important. Yeah, you, you do a lot of yeah, climbing yeah, and hiking. hiking and yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. and also and that. Crazy stuff. And with that, I wish to really inspire my friends to get, uh, get, their, you know, get their bodies up, you know? Uh, mm -hmm. up, up and running, doing whatever it is, especially outside because uh, right now we're all really trapped in our homes now. Right. Especially mm -hmm. after what happened in 2019, the pandemic and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. That's but, right. Yeah. Well, you just cooped up in a room and inspire them to speak in a deeper voice like yeah, he does, is, <laughs> which is very authoritative. It is quite and very inspiring. <laughs> <laughs> especially yes. to me. <laughs> Kanisha, do you feel the same way? Do you also use your social, social media yeah. in order to promote uh, scouts, the scouts yeah. activities to your friends. And inspire them to mm -hmm. do, to follow suit. Yeah. So with posting on social media, I don't really post a lot on social media, but I do text my friends a lot. Ah, okay. Mm. You still text. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, whenever I'm outside right. and I'm like outdoors, I'm enjoying the nature, the air, I always tell my friends what I'm doing and especially when they're maybe feeling a little bit lazy, I tell them to go out once in a while, go touch grass. Mm. Go touch grass. <laughs> Breathe some nature. fresh air. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. She's telling me to stop touching your screen. Yes. <laughs> yes. Touch some grass. Touch right. some yes. grass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, guys, just final questions before we conclude are, there's not enough time to talk to you. You guys are so interesting. Right. We, we want to to know more, so, yeah. so much more about what you mm -hmm. do in Scouts. However, uh, it's a time constraint now. Um, this one final question, World Scouts Day. To each and every one of you, what does it mean, uh, Satrio? World Scouts Day, what does it mean to me? It's a meaning that is, for example, in being a scout, mm -hmm. it's about being in a family, you know? Yeah. Especially when you're in uh, your groups and all that stuff. Yeah. And then, for example, if you have your own friend group, and then there's this scout group, yeah. uh, the teachers usually try to separate you from your usual friends. So that means you can talk to uh, uh, other people more. Yeah. And that, to me, really what shows Pramuka is. Really yeah. shows what Scouts being is. It's to communicate to people. Yeah. It's to experience new things. And in National Scouts Day, I think it represents it all. You know, It shows that Pramuka is one, it's unified. We, through whatever your ethnicity is, whatever your background is, we can all enjoy what being a scout is. Mm. Wow, that is very well said. And who knows, you might end up having extended family, mm -hmm. uh, Audrey, not just the family that you have here. I mean, here in the studio, hello, mom and dad. So. <laughs> We're all brothers That's and sisters. A, hello, brothers and sisters out there, extended family. What about you, Kanisha? So World, World Scouts, Scouts Day. Day to yeah. me is Yesterday on World Scouts Day, yeah. uh, my school did a ceremony where oh, they yeah. got the PASUS members to be the ceremony. Oh, yeah, like the flag yes. ceremony? Yes, yeah. the flags yeah. and the MC and other mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. And that really shows me that there are many different diversities in Indonesia, but on World Scouts Day, all of those diversities, all of those like different ethnicities, mm -hmm. backgrounds, and other stuff, they can be united as one. Mm. So even though we come from different backgrounds, we can still be friends with each other, and we can still be together. Mm, so everyone can come together into one 
united uh, yes. and solid group as well. Wow, that's very well said. Thank you so much for coming into the studio. Well, that's right. Satria yes. Anza Naufal and Kanisha Ayudia Wijanarko. You guys both inspired us very yes. much this morning and hopefully uh, inspired others out there who are watching. Mm -hmm. And thank you so much for being here, conversing with us and setting, uh, you know, the path for uh, those to follow suit. Congratulations again on World Scouts well. Day. We wish you the best of luck for your future endeavors. Thank you, yes. guys. Thank you. No problem. Yes. I appreciate the invitation as well. Thank you so much for the amazing opportunity. Thank do come again someday yes, to the do. future. <laughs> we would love to talk more about this. All yes, right. wow, that was a great conversation, Rahmat, That's on right. uh, World Scouts Day. And we are most definitely inspired as well to go out to nature. Yes. Um, but don't go anywhere because after this, we have more news and reports for you still on Starting Point. Stay tuned.